my name is Stuart Wortley and during this next tutorial I'm going to show you how to model up a paddle for stand-up paddle boarding. Now, I'm a keen paddle boarder and this came about because I wanted to design a little mount to mount my GoPro on the end of my paddle uh, when I couldn't find a decent one in the shops. And then that came into the fact that well actually how would I model a paddle? So that's what we're going to go through during this next sort of 30 minutes or so. We will be covering several modelling techniques during this presentation starting with some basic lofting then we're going to do an advanced loft just to get us some more organic shapes and then finishing off with some actual surface modelling both in the out and out construction as well as in some construction geometry as well. The paddle itself consists of three major areas and one kind of finishing off cosmetic piece. So we've got the shaft of the actual paddle, we've got the handle and we've also got the blade and then finishing it off and just sealing all the joints is we've actually got some rubber seals that go over the actual interface between the two designs. So we're going to complete these again using a majority of loftings and surfacing tools. A common tool that is used when creating more complex shapes or organic shapes is the loft feature. So to create the loft we use several different sketches that are slices for our design. We then create the shape by picking the individual profiles to create a solid shape based on those bits of geometry. We can then also control these shapes by using additional guide curves or setting start and end tangency constraints. OK, let's go and have a look at how we use the loft tool when we create the shaft. The shaft is a fairly simple part to model. It's a simple loft with two profiles and it tapers from a circle down into an elliptical shape. So what we're going to do here is just create a new plane to give us our kind of either end. I'm holding down my control key here just to drag out a new plane. Now the actual paddle itself is over kind of a metre and a half long. Now I could drag this out to its true size of uh, 1380 but it makes for a very awkward model to play with. So I'm actually going to take a zero off of that, so 138 mil. And then what I can do is create the component and resize it afterwards. And it just makes life easier for myself. With my two planes created, I can now create the two separate sketches that are going to create my loft. The first one is nice and easy. It's a straight circle. It's 27 mil in diameter. Then starting a new sketch on the second plane, so this is the bottom of my shaft. This one's going to be an ellipse. Now it's slightly offset because what I want to do is keep the leading edge the same. So I'm just kind of roughly putting it in place. Now if you've not used the ellipse tool, it's very similar to the circle. We drag out the two axes, but I also need to center it up. So at the moment this can kind of slide all over my design. So if I pick the actual kind of major axis, the center point, and the origin and I'm just going to make them all vertical so everything stays along the center line of my shaft. With that done all I need now is to put a couple of sizes in. So I know that this is actually going to be 35 mil across the actual kind of major axis and 31 mil across the minor. Okay if we close this sketch down now we can create our first loft. So this is just found in the regular feature tools and it's going to be our lofted base. Now you need to pick the two sketches and it's always good to try and pick in roughly the same location on both designs. This will stop the loft from twisting. I'm also going to apply a uh, sort of fin feature here because this is the carbon fibre shaft so it will be actually a hollow shaft. And we could also apply, if we needed to, some start and end tangency. But in this case, it's not. It's just a straight, tapered shaft. My default material is plain carbon steel. So that's going to make for a heavy paddle. So all we're going to do is just edit the material now. And let's just choose some carbon fibre. Uh, so if I just browse away, choose it from the existing pre-created work materials. Uh, I think it's down actually further down at the bottom. We've actually got uh, glass fibres and carbon fibres. And that'll do us. Okay, 
So you can see why we've made this part, uh, it's quite short at the moment, but it makes life a bit easier. So all we want to do is modify this to the correct length. So by double clicking, we can see the dimensions. We can actually see the distance for which we used for our uh, first plane generation. So I'm just going to add that zero back on again. So that's the nice thing about just taking the zero off. It just means you don't have to actually remember the values. You just need to put the zero back on. And we can see we've created our shaft.